Hi, I'm Michael Goulian, and the airplane that you see behind me is a state-of-the-art aerobatic airplane called the CAP-232. It's a world-class unlimited aerobatic airplane, and what that means is that it really is built to do nothing but fly the most intense aerobatics that are really capable in a general aviation airplane today. The airframe and the seat are custom molded, so I went over to France and had the seat custom molded just like you would in a race car, but when I put the parachute on, I slide into the seat, I mold it into it. And then if you look into the seat belt system, there's actually a dual belt with high negative G and the inverted flying close to the ground. We want to make sure that obviously we're not going to have any seat belt failures, so there's two seat belts. We have a ratchet system. We actually ratchet ourselves into the airplane so we get as tight as we can get. And after about eight to 10 minutes of aerobatic flying or towards the end of a sequence, it'll be so tight in there that it cuts the blood flow off to my legs and I actually get uh, my feet to fall asleep at the end of a, of a sequence. Clear. I have what's called an Arresti error cryptographic system. Those things that you see written in there are rolls, loops, tumbles, 45 degree lines, vertical lines. So that's really my roadmap in the sky and tells me what I'm doing at what time. Coming in from the right side in this CAP 232, a superb airplane. Mike, one of the earliest pilots to be flying them in this country. As he uh, rolls it gone up, takes it over onto its back, he's looking up into the sun right now, and a transition to a loop of the tumble on top. As the airplane's flying sideways and tumbling, nose over tail, and that turns into a two-turn snap and the sun's in the way. Now aileron rolls as the uh, speed starts to pick up and he'll take it out to the right side and to show you the aileron to control with the power that he has in his plane, he'll jam that stick over and do a series of vertical rolls as he continues up, there's four, there is five, he's slowing down, what's he gonna do? There's number six right there and he's gonna cap it off and fly the airplane out. Holy cow, on top, let's watch him as he continues to roll. Now he snaps it on the inside, one time to the right, aileron to the left, one, there's two, this sighting device is mounted just perfect for my airplane. It's adjusted so when I lay this line on the horizon, the airplane looks exactly vertical. And also this line on a 45 and this line on a reverse 45. So if you see any in cockpit footage, most of my flying will be done out either the left wing tip or the right wing tip because I get my orientation through looking out over the wing. Puts a wing at the sky and does a flip top, one wing up, one wing down, and now as he caps it over, yanks it through, he's setting up for the cartwheel. Now the idea with this is to take the airplane by one wing and fling it across the sky. One of the things that makes a, an aerobatic airplane so great is how fast it can roll or how fast it can do a complete revolution about its longitudinal axis in a second. And this airplane has a roll rate of over 360 degrees a second, very close to 400 degrees a second. And one of the ways that it can do that is that it has full span ailerons, which means that almost 80% of the wing is covered with the aileron. And then if you look at moving a, a control surface that's this long with just a small control stick in there, the control forces would be very high. So the, what they do is the manufacturer installs what they call shovels beneath the wing. And those are counterbalance spades. And the shovels, just as you can see here, counteract the forces. And it act, acts like power steering in a car. Just to show you the controllability, up comes the nose. There's quarter, quarter, quarter. There's a four, not, not even a four point. He does uh, over the top, one and a quarter. And now lifts the nose, and he'll start into the uh, the vertical rolls on the way up, and you see as he uh, as he rolls the plane, stops it smartly so that you're looking at the bottom of the plane, and right there we watch as he will hammerhead. That's a perfect competition hammerhead. Only instead of letting the nose come all the way down, he uh, will get the nose down off of 45 degrees and snap the airplane three times. Another aileron roll as he sets up for the maneuver that I always said has a very strange name, not real appealing, the Suez slide. 
as he slides the airplane across the sky. Nose is pointed up, and he's going sideways. Let me get uh, get on the radio here, and let's give him a call. Hey, Michael, you are looking so good today. That suicide was a killer. Frank, I'll tell you what, is it an incredible day for an air show or what? I'm just climbing out of 1,000 feet, catching my breath here. The engine in the airplane is a six-cylinder Lycoming-powered IO540. It's built in Pennsylvania. It's a heck of an engine, and it's really a very, very stock engine. And in a general aviation airplane meant for cross-country flying, it will last about 2,000 hours. In this configuration, it'll last about five to 600 hours. But they're incredibly reliable and really, really bulletproof engines. All right, OK, when are you ready to come in here? All right about now. Here we go, starting with some snap rolls. There's a series of snap rolls off to the right as he snaps the airplane. There's six, there's seven, and there's, he says seven is quite enough because he's looking at the ground and the ground's getting very big. As you can imagine, air show flying, because of its proximity to the ground, has a little bit of danger involved in it. And the danger is not really so much in the maneuvers, but it is the proximity to the ground. So an air show performance that you see me fly here, I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and never change the routine. And that's, that's the safety factor of the safety valve in my performances. I do the same thing every single time and never stray from that, never change from that. Um, before I go flying, I start walking through my sequence. I think about where I am in, in my space in the airport, what I'm seeing out the window, what the runway looks like, what the environment looks like, when I see the crowd. So I've flown this flight in my mind three or four times before I ever get in the airplane to fly that day. So all I'm doing is just to practice on what I already did on the ground. And the airplane is tumbling to the right while flying towards you, the recovery upside down, nose high at zero airspeed. Everybody that participates in an air show loves to fly. That's why they're here. Uh, and ma a major part of an air show is to share our love of aviation with the people that don't have the exposure to aviation that we do. So the people here at Westfield get to see a bunch of people that love to fly and hopefully can inspire them to love airplanes and to show them things that they never thought were possible in aviation. Well, let's see the airplane accelerate. We're looking here at 180, 190, right there. And uh, when he yanks the nose up, first thing he does, that's an aileron roll, one and a quarter times around, then an outside snap over the top and the airplane tumbles once again. The most exhilarating part of the air show is really trying to make the perfect show. I know what's written on my sequence card sitting in there in the cockpit, what it takes to be perfect, and maybe never will achieve it, but try every single time to achieve the perfect air show. He refers to this as the side slide mini loop as he takes the plane straight up. First he kicks it off to the right, now he kicks it off to the left. He's got it just about stopped. Now watch, with the airplane sitting there outside, the stick goes forward, and that is the absolute teeniest, weeniest loop you're ever gonna see, ever, ever. You know, the excitement for me comes right after the last maneuver. It's intense work for 12 minutes, and I don't even think about how am I doing, how well is it going, I'm concentrating so hard. And th so the second I stop the last maneuver and I've got the airplane pointed, and looking at the crowd, roll away and say, okay, it's over. That's really when all the uh, satisfaction comes.